Good afternoon. I'm Bill Flynn, CEO of Amtrak. And joining me here today are the, our Amtrak Chairman of the Board, Mr. Tony Kosha, Board Director, Mr. Bert D. Clemente, and several other members of our senior management team. And we welcome you here to our 50th anniversary celebration. On May 1st, 1971, the first Amtrak train rolled out of New York City en route to Philadelphia, where we're gathered here today. And certainly at that time, no one could have imagined what would lay ahead. And today we're here representing our more than 18,000 dedicated employees. They operate a national system serving over more than 500 destinations across 46 states, the District of Columbia, and three Canadian provinces. And we have tens of millions of loyal Amtrak customers. And I'm honored to be joined here today by perhaps one of Amtrak's most loyal customers, the 46th President of the United States, Joe Biden. Mr. President, I thank you for being here to mark this milestone with us and for your tremendous support of Amtrak throughout your career of serving our nation. The American Jobs Plan, which includes $80 billion for rail, is just what the country needs as we build for the future. America needs a rail network that offers frequent, reliable, sustainable, and equitable train service. Amtrak has the vision and the expertise to deliver it. Now, we need Congress to provide the funding for the next 50 years. Our vision includes expanding rail service to connect to up to 160 new communities throughout the United States and bu by building new and improved corridors in over 25 states. As part of this comprehensive plan, Amtrak will introduce new stations in over half of the United States, increase rail service to 47 of our top 50 metropolitan areas, and create over half a million new jobs, new well-paying jobs. But we're not stopping there. We're investing in our fleet. Last week, we announced the procurement of 83 intercity train sets, which will operate on the Northeast Corridor and various state-supported and long-distance routes. And we will soon debut the new high-speed Acela train sets, setting the stage for the next generation of train travel in America and on our Northeast Corridor. We're investing in our stations. In January, our partnership with the State of New York, we, with our partnership with the State of New York, we opened Moynihan Train Hall, Amtrak's new home in New York City, a world-class station providing an enhanced customer experience. And we are advancing station modernization projects in other major cities, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, and right here in Philadelphia. We're investing in our infrastructure. We are making important strides on vital infrastructure projects up and down the Northeast Corridor, projects such as our Gateway Program and the rebuilding and replacement of the Baltimore and Potomac Tunnel. Planned infrastructure projects will increase track capacity, improve ride quality, and offer greater reliability. All of these projects are investments in our future, but they're also investments in our planet. Amtrak provides a more sustainable mode of travel and demand for rail travel will continue to grow. In fact, traveling on Amtrak emits up to 83% fewer greenhouse gas emissions than by driving and up to 73% fewer GHGs than by flying. We have a truly dedicated workforce at Amtrak that carries on the legacy of the railroaders who served before them and who take great pride in connecting America. And it's because of our employees that Amtrak serves a vital role in our country's mobility strategy. We continue to see their important contributions play out in real time as we navigate through the COVID-19 pandemic. When the world stopped, in many ways, due to the spread of the coronavirus, our employees, really indeed all transportation employees, made sure America kept moving. They were on the front lines every day providing the essential transportation services to those who needed it. And now, more than ever, Amtrak is ready to provide the safe journey that travelers are seeking as our nation recovers from the effects of this pandemic. It's been an honor to lead Amtrak during this critical time. 
I come from a railroad family like so many other fellow Amtrak uh, colleagues do. My father and uncle were both locomotive engineers. My brother David was an Amtrak conductor and local union chair with over 40 years of service. And my brother Brian works at Amtrak now with over 15 years of service to the company. These connections deepen my pride in Amtrak and my con commitment to further Amtrak's important mission to serve our country. We have much to celebrate today and more to look forward to in the future. In closing, I'd like to thank those who paved the way. We owe you a tremendous debt of gratitude. I salute the men and women who make up Amtrak workforce, our partners, political leaders on both sides of the aisle, and our many stakeholders whose tireless efforts keep our railroad running. And of course, to our customers, thank you for your continued support. Get ready, America. While Amtrak may be turning 50, we're just getting started. And now it's my pleasure to welcome to the podium Mr. Blake Weaver, who's an Amtrak conductor here in Philadelphia, who will introduce the President. Thank you. Blake. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. I, too, am part of a railroad. Sorry. I, too, am part of a railroad family. My father was a conductor for over 40 years, and I've been one for the last 18. I joined Amtrak on President's Day in 2004 as assistant conductor, and after a couple of years, I was promoted to conductor. I can honestly say I love what I do. I like having the opportunity of working with my coworkers to serve Amtrak's customers up and down the Northeast Corridor to get them safely and on time to where they're going. I'm proud of Amtrak's mission and especially proud of how hard they work during this pandemic and keeping essential passengers across America moving. I'm also excited to see the rest of our passengers back on our trains. I'm very excited to see them on our brand new Cell Express sets. One of my first lessons my father taught me as a conductor was to look out for one of Amtrak's most frequent riders, Senator Joe Biden. In 2006, I had, the I had the privilege of meeting Mr. Biden on the train while collecting tickets. Before I had a chance to introduce myself, Mr. Biden stopped what he was working on and invited me to sit down to talk to him for a few minutes. I always remembered how he treated everyone. He always made time for both the passengers and the employees. He also treated everyone like they were family. So, Mr. President, I would like to thank you for all the support you have given Amtrak like you thank for all the miles you added up over the years. I'd like to thank you for being part of the Amtrak family. I would like to thank you for being part of my family. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to introduce the President of the United States of America, Mr. Joe Biden. Great to be back in Philly. Great to be back to 33 Street Station. Blake, you didn't uh, you didn't treat each other like family. We are family. Please sit down, guys. Sit down. Your dad, Greg, is here too. As far as I'm concerned, the Weavers are family. And Justin Gray, speaking of family, your father and I fought a lot of fights together planned a lot of those fights on Amtrak, coming back to Philly. I didn't come all the way to Philly. It's a wonderful tribute to the to this station to bear his name. And uh, Bill Flynn, thank you for having me. Governor Wolf, Mayor Kenny, Congressman Evans, thank you for the passport into the city. Appreciate it. And we have another. I don't know if they're all here still, but I met a lot of really important friends that were here to uh, for this occasion. I understand Senator Blumenthal is here. Right, there you go. One of the great senators, the former attorney general, took care of my son, Bo, when he was attorney general. Thank you very much. And also Dwight Evans. Dwight's here. 
You can't miss Dwight. Come on, Dwight. Stand up there, man. And uh, a good friend of mine and worked like the devil to get me elected, Brendan Boyle. Brendan, that's the Irish of it, man. And Donald Payne, New Jersey. I keep telling Donald, because Delaware is so small, it is a constitutional — there was a case in the Supreme Court. Delaware, the state of, owns the Delaware River up to the high water mark of New Jersey. Just want you to know that. You got to treat us with more respect. And uh, Mayor Kenny, thanks for the passport. Great friend. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're doing a heck of a job. And uh, a real close, close friend who is a co-chairman of my campaign and just a great friend is our, our whole time. Governor Ed Rendell. Eddie, thank you, pal. This city owes you a lot. And Tony Costa, the chair of the — chairman of the board and one of my best friends in — in life, a guy named Bert DiClemente. We've known each other from high school. We went to rival high school. Bert ran my operation in Delaware for years and years. The one election I got the most votes in was the last election I ran for the Senate. I was also running for vice president at the time, because under Delaware law, if you're not out of the Senate race in a certain time period, you — you got to stay in. And so Bert ran. He was the senator in Delaware campaigning for me. He got more votes than I got. So, Bert, thank you very much. Also, Justin Gray. I've mentioned Justin already and his dad. Uh, and Greg Weaver, Jr. Uh, Greg, you're — you are family. Uh, I mean, excuse me, Blake is family. And Mary Kate, what a lovely kid. And Bill Flynn of Amtrak. You know, folks, uh, the fact is that uh, if I — in the past, when I've ended up at the 30th Street Station, Amtrak Station, it's probably because I took the late train back from Washington and I slept through the Delaware stop, literally, not figured. I only did it about four times, but uh, but I would have uh, I wouldn't have missed this for the world. It's an honor to celebrate Amtrak's 50th anniversary. I look forward to a bright future for all American Rail. You know, back in 2016. Uh, I announced a federal loan that allowed Amtrak to purchase the new Acela trains uh, sets that you see behind me. And they look great. I can hardly wait to ride. And they made — they're made in America, and I wanted to see more of that. That's why the investments in my American Jobs Plan are guided by one principle, buy American. Buy products were made in America. And American tax dollars are going to be used to buy American products to create American jobs. When I became vice president, one of uh, the Capitol Hill newspapers estimated that I had taken more than 7,000 round trips in Amtrak over my career. I think that's an exaggeration, and I'm going to rely on those two conductors <clears throat> that, that Mr. Weaver will remember. Uh, one of them was a guy named Angelo Negri. And Angelo, there was an article, my — I guess my fourth or fifth year as president, vice president, saying Biden travels 1,000 1,300,000 miles on Air Force One. And I used to — the Secret Service didn't like it, but I used to like to take the train home. My mom was sick, and I'd come, try to come home almost every weekend as vice president to see her. And uh, I was getting on the train, and Angelo Negri came up to me and goes, Joey, baby! And he grabbed my cheek, started to squeeze it, like he always did. And I thought he was going to get shot. <laughs> I'm serious. And I said, no, no, he's a friend. He said, Joey, what's the big deal? A million, 200,000, 300,000 miles on Air Force Two. You know how many miles you travel on Amtrak? I said, no, Angie, I don't know. And he gave me the calculation. And he said, you travel 1,515,000 miles on Amtrak. So the fact is, I probably take Angie's word before I took the word of what the article said. But the point is, in the process, as uh, Conductor Reeve will tell you, Amtrak became my family. I literally, literally, every single day that I was in the United States Senate, got the, 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 the either the 728, it became the 732, and or and got home on. If I got lucky, I got the I got the Metro that left. The last one left at six, or I got the 730 coming home. And you get to know everybody. You get to know the folks. And I used to have a a Christmas party for Amtrak employees at my home. And it got so big, we ended up having it a summer party because family and retirees kept coming back. I want to tell you, these guys and women, they work like the devil. 
They really, really, really do. And Amtrak wasn't just a way of getting home. It provided me, and I'm not joking, an entire other family. A community dedicated that was a professional and that we've shared milestones in my life. And uh, I've been allowed to share milestones in theirs. I've been to an awful lot of weddings and christenings and, unfortunately, some burials as well. We're family. You know, I, uh, I remember one night my daughter was only six years old, and it was my birthday. And uh, we were voting, and I went to Bob Dole, and I said, Bob, when's the next vote going to take place? He said, Joe, what, why? I said, well, my daughter is really upset I'm not going to be able to be home for the birthday cake she made for me. He said, what do you need? I said, I need just time to catch the 5 o'clock Metro, and I can get the 628 coming back, because in the platform, you guess in Delaware, you walk from one side to the other. Got off the train. My wife, Jill, was standing there. My daughter had the cake with the candle lit. I blew them out, gave me a kiss, walked across, and got on the southbound. Uh, so it has been part of my life. I've been riding an Amtrak for almost as long as there's been an Amtrak. And I've come to see that Amtrak doesn't just carry us from one place to another. It opens up enormous possibilities. And especially now, it makes it possible to build an economy of the future and one that we need. Last week, I announced the target of cutting greenhouse gases and gas emissions in half by 2030. And most of that of those emissions in this, in this, in this country come from transportation. But if just 10 percent of the freight ship and the largest trucks went by rail instead, we'd be removing 3,300,000 cars from the road, and we've been planting is the same as doing that, or planting 260 million trees in America. As I've said from the beginning, when I think about fighting climate change, I think about jobs. And rail, and hopefully the expansion of rail, provides good union jobs, good paying jobs. It also connects people to jobs and economic opportunities that can be reached from wherever you live. Let's put this in perspective. For years, I fought efforts to cut funding for Amtrak, because cutting funding for Amtrak would be a disaster for our environment and our economy. Amtrak carries four times as many riders between Washington and New York City as every single airline does within 50 miles of the shore from Florida all the way up the coast. Imagine what we'd have to do a single day without the Northeast Carter, for example, with Amtrak and the Northeast Carter would cost the economy $100 million. If you shut down all passenger service on Amtrak's Northeast Carter, the projects that compensate for the loss, you'd have to add seven new lanes of highway on I-95. And consider that cost, average of $30 million for a linear mile on I-95. This is the bargain of bargains and bargains. It's economical and it's environmentally uh, a, a lifesaver. That's why, in my rescue plan, American Rescue Plan, we worked hard to keep Amtrak running. At the height of the pandemic, because we weren't traveling Amtrak, furloughed 1,200 1, employees. And we were able to provide emergency relief to keep rail service running. And we've now brought back 1,200 union workers who had been furloughed. And by the way, you get a union wage, not 15 bucks an hour, a prevailing wage. But we have to do more than just build back. We have to build back better. And today, we have a once-in-a-generation opportunity to position Amtrak and rail, and inner city rail as well, in general, to play a central role in our transformation and transportation economic future, to make investments that can help America get back on track, no pun intended. Before the pandemic hit, Amtrak's ridership and revenues were on the upswing. The Northeast Carter has been making money for a long while now, but last year, the whole of Amtrak's system was projected to break even for the first time in history, but then we had the pandemic. But there is still a huge backlog in deferred maintenance, huge need to modernize our trains, our stations, our bridges, our tunnels. Well, we're, take, we're talking about critical jobs like the Hudson River Tunnel, the Baltimore Potomac Tunnels, and the Susquehanna River Bridge. In my American Jobs Plan, I propose spending $10 billion a year on passenger rail and freight rail. 
of this two-thirds would support existing Amtrak routes, including the Northeast Corridor, but nationwide. And we're talking about union jobs, as I said. And we talk, we're taking care of the riders, laying track, wiring switches, fixing bridges, tunnels, modernizing stations, and repairing and rebuilding this vital infrastructure. This would allow for a, the potential to expand passenger rail service. Imagine a two-hour train ride between Atlanta and Charlotte going at speeds of 220 miles an hour and two-and-a-half-hour trip between Chicago and Detroit or faster and more regular trips between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, a route that I imagine could be pretty popular on Fridays. Bill, as you've said, your vision for Amtrak calls for a new inner-city rail service, up to 160 previously unserved communities being connected. Think of what it will mean for opportunity if we can connect Milwaukee to Green Bay to Madison, Scranton and Allentown to New York, Indianapolis to Louisville, and much, much more. It's going to provide jobs. It will also accommodate jobs. And what this means is that towns and cities that have been in danger of being left out and left behind will be back in the game. It means families don't have to sacrifice the cost of living or quality of access to opportunity that sometimes only occurs if they live in a big city. We have a huge opportunity here to provide fast, safe, reliable, clean transportation in this country. And transit is part of the infrastructure. And like the rest of our infrastructure, we're way behind the rest of the world right now. We need to remember we're in competition with the rest of the world. People come here and set up businesses. People stay here. People grow because of the ability to access, access transportation, access all the infrastructure. It's what allows us to compete. And with the rest of the world, to win the 21st century, we've got to move. China already has 23,000 miles of high-speed rail, 220 miles per hour, two-thirds of all the high-speed rail in, 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 in the world, 220 miles an hour. And the way — and they're, and they're wor working on uh, transit on trains that can go as high as 400 miles an hour. We're behind the curve. But, folks, as I said the other night, America's on the move again. We need to remember that we're in the United States of America. There's nothing beyond our capacity, nothing we can't do if we do it together. And we celebrate Amtrak's birthday. I was thinking about America, Amtrak's role, as I said, on my birthday, when they allowed me to come home and blow out that candle. There's a lot of things that Amtrak does. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, if we were able to, which is now beyond the ability to pay for it, but if we were able to straighten out three curves from Washington to New York, you could make it from Washington to New York in an hour and 32 minutes. An hour and 32 minutes. Folks, there's so much we can do, and it has such an incredibly positive impact on the environment, incredibly positive impact on work, President, on, on opportunities, and again, all the things we have to do to put Amtrak in place and be one of the great, great contributors to our country is we have to invest. And so, you know, uh, if you think about it, when we were — when I was vice president with Barack, he allowed me to put together a budget for Amtrak. And it had money for high-speed rail at 200 miles an hour from — from uh, — uh, Char excuse me, from Charlotte, one — another line going from — in Florida down to Tampa, another line. If we, if we had moved, Gov, we'd have that tunnel fixed in New York now. The money was there to get it done. There's so much we can do, and it's the biggest bang for the buck we can expend. So on this momentous birthday of Amtrak, I want to — I want to thank you for making so many birthdays possible. I believe that the best days for Amtrak and for rail and for America are ahead. I really believe that. And I'm just confident. I'm confident we can get this done. And I must tell you, I'm anxious to see the new train. Thank you all so very much. God bless America. May God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you.